Did the San Francisco 49ers lose the offseason? The Athletic listing the Niners as one of the biggest disappointments during the 2024 offseason going into the 2024 regular season. And we're doing this following OTAs and mandatory minicamp as we're looking ahead at training camp because we have a good idea of what this Niners roster will look like. What say you? The Athletic calling the Niners an offseason loser. Did the Niners win the offseason or lose the offseason? Sound off with what you think down below in the comment section. So NFL minicamps officially in the rear view for all 32 teams in the NFL. The Niners had theirs a couple of weeks ago. Some teams have had minicamps since then, but they're all complete. And now we have this break, a month and change prior to the start of training camp. The Niners veterans and rookies both reporting in July, rookies on July 16th, veterans on July 23rd. And the Athletic releasing a list of offseason winners and offseason losers. Pretty much a stock up, stock down for some teams across the NFL. And they factored in the moves made by all of these respective organizations in the NFL draft and in free agency. The Athletics winners here, the Chicago Bears, the Washington Commanders, the Detroit Lions, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Wait, Chase, why are these teams winners and the Niners aren't? We're going to dive into that here. Why the Athletic thinks that the Bears were offseason winners, and obviously I'm summarizing all of this, and I'll share my thoughts as well. They drafted Caleb Williams. They got him weapons in Roma Dunze and Keenan Allen, and they already have DJ Moore. They signed DeAndre Swift. They signed Jalen Johnson to a contract extension. The outlook for the Bears as far as talent, is a lot better and less bleak as compared to what it was at this point last year. I still don't think that Matt Eberflus is the answer as head coach. I think he could be gone after the 2024 season, but they did put together a good offseason to give them hope looking into the future. So in the athletics eyes, they're a winner. So are the commanders, led by former Niners assistant general manager Adam Peters, and why the Athletic thinks that the Commanders won the offseason, pretty much they changed the entire culture, top to bottom. And it started with Josh Harris taking over for Dan Snyder, the fraud, as the owner. And then they make sweeping changes. A new GM, a new head coach in Dan Quinn, a new quarterback with Jaden Daniels, and a newfound culture. And then defensively, they brought in a couple of good players who add veteran presences to that team. Bobby Wagner, a future Hall of Famer, and then a sneaky signing in Frank LeVu, a former linebacker for the Carolina Panthers. The commanders here resetting the tone of that team. Why the Lions are offseason winners. They're building upon the momentum from the 2023 season in which they won the division for the first time in 30 plus years and then made it to the NFC Championship game in which yeah, they gave up that 17-point lead to the Niners. They gave out extensions to Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown, Penny Sewell, so they took care of some of their own players. Then they signed Marcus Davenport and Edge, Carlton Davison for free agency, and then they drafted two corners, Terry and Arnold and Ennis Rakestraw out of Mizzou. The Eagles also a winner in the eyes of the Athletic. They remade their secondary by drafting Quinian Mitchell and Cooper DeGene. They made splashes in free agency signing Saquon Barkley, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Bryce Huff, and Devin White, and they extended their own players, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jordan Mailata, and Landon Dickerson. Lastly, the Buccaneers listed as winners per the Athletic because, like some of these other teams, took care of some of their own. Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, Levante David, Antoine Winfield, they all re-signed. They drafted a stud of an offensive lineman in Graham Barton, and they, like the Lions, building off of last year's success, can they repeat as division winners in the NFC South? As for the losers, according to The Athletic, the Buffalo Bills, the Carolina Panthers, the Dallas Cowboys, Jacksonville Jaguars, and the San Francisco 49ers. For Buffalo, and these are all my opinions here, the wide receiver core took a huge hit. You no longer have Gabe Davis. He signed with Jacksonville. You traded away Stephon Diggs. You drafted Keon Coleman, but you're light at wide receiver, and you're probably not as good defensively after big changes there. 
Carolina Panthers, you hire a new head coach. Bryce Young needed to add some weight. Still doesn't have a lot of talent on the offensive side. Deontay Johnson's his number one wideout. Dallas Cowboys literally did nothing all offseason. Maybe their most notable move, bringing back Ezekiel Elliott. Jacksonville Jaguars spent a lot of money, but have they improved all that much? And then the Niners coming in here at number five. Why are the Niners losers per The Athletic? Here's what The Athletic had to say about San Francisco taking an L this offseason. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're talking all things Niners every single day on this show. And when I put on this headset, when I get in front of the camera, my duty is to give you entertaining, insightful, informative, thought-provoking news, rumors, analysis, live shows, watch parties. We do it all. So hit that sub button and turn on your notifications. Therefore, when we go live, when we push out a video, you will be notified. You'll also be notified when there's a great deal. Thanks to our friends at Fanatics, like getting both of these shirts for just $45. You have the scarlet red. You have the black. Chatsports.com slash 49 combo. Link is down below in the comment section and in the description of this video. All right, circle back to that question. Why are the Niners losers per the athletic? Here's what the athletic had to say. After a heartbreaking overtime loss to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, the Niners had a relatively quiet offseason. They gave Christian McCaffrey an extension and drafted Florida wide receiver Ricky Pearsall, who might not be ready for prime time until 2025. The offensive line could have used a bolster, but John Lynch made no significant additions. Perhaps the most notable departure was defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes, whose philosophies never quite meshed with those of Kyle Shanahan. Can first-year defensive coordinator Nick Sorensen reignite a defense that lost Eric Armstead and Javon Kinlaw and then added Leonard Floyd, Yatur Gross Matos, and Jordan Elliott? It was a relatively quiet offseason for the Niners as far as monster moves, splash moves, and sexy moves because the Niners didn't really need to make any big moves. This team is still very, very loaded, and you can make the argument that the Niners are the most talented team in football, top to bottom. And I actually think what they've done is added a lot of quality depth, which makes them maybe better than they were last year. Got to be able to stay healthy, though. The Niners going into this offseason, for me, clearly had a plan based upon what happened last year when their efficiency defensively against the run fell off a cliff from the best team to one of the worst. And then in the Super Bowl, in which they got gashed at times, and in the playoffs, they wanted to make over the defensive line. Chase Young, see ya. Leonard Floyd, hello. Yatur Gross Matos, we need that Arden Key player who can play inside, outside. Bye-bye, Eric Armstead. Hello. Malik, Malik, Malik. And then Jordan Elliott signed because he's a better interior defensive lineman against the run. Now, this hinges on Nick Bosa returning back to the DPOY form and Javon Hargrave having a big year, but the Niners did tinker with the defensive line and made it over to a certain degree. A lot of new personnel on that front. You needed to get better and deeper at the cornerback spot. You were rail thin as far as depth there last year and really the last couple of years. Luckily, you've had some pretty good injury luck at corner, and I like the work that the Niners did in stacking up the secondary. Isaac Yadam, Rocky Sin, Renardo Green, Malik Mustafa. You added some quality depth to the cornerback spot. Chase Lucas in the slot. You still have a huge problem with the offensive line, and I have a problem with the offensive line philosophy. Trent Williams and Aaron Banks, they've given up one sack while playing with, uh, with one another. That's great, right? But center, right guard, right tackle, huge question marks. Now, the Niners did draft Dominic Pooney and Jarrett Kingston, two of the only tackles in college football last year, who did not give up a sack, but they're young players. Can they help you in 2024? Nick Sorensen, admittedly, a huge question mark. What is the scheme going to look like? Is the philosophy going to be different? Is he going to be in over his skis? He's never been a DC. Is he ready to take over a defense that has Super Bowl aspirations? And if this hiring flops after the Steve Wilkes hiring flopped, 
because he was one and done, that's egg on the face of Kyle Shanahan. So some questions and risks right there. And Ricky Pearsall, he was a little bit of a reach. I don't think that you draft slot-wide receivers in the first round. I think Ricky Pearsall is more of a slot. I think he has a limited body type. Explosive, sure-handed, tough, great hands, really good route runner and footwork. I just think he's better from the inside. And there were better players on the board at 31, in my opinion. So did the Niners lose this offseason? I think there are other teams who had worse off seasons who could be a part of that list of five. And San Francisco is still one of the top teams in the NFL. And when you look at the odds to win the Super Bowl, according to sports books, it's the Niners or the Chiefs as the odds on favorites to win the Super Bowl. Be sure to give me a follow on X and Instagram at Chase underscore senior. Let me know what you think about the content. Let me know what you think about the show. All that and more. Hit me up.